I spent Thursday through Saturday this past week along with John, our moderator, and Jim, our vice moderator, at our Southern California, Nevada annual gathering. It's that time each year when the church sends representatives to do the work of the wider church. We learn together, we enjoy the company of our wider church friends. And this year, the theme was Bold Church, Bold Hope. We heard from Dr. Peter McCary, Global, Re Re I can read, Global Relations Minister for the Middle East and Europe, who shared some background on what the United Church of Christ involvement has been in the Middle East over the years and what we're doing to work for peace now in the Middle East. We heard from the new conference minister, the Reverend Rachel Pryor, and we heard from the Reverend Tracy Blackman, former national staff person. In Reverend Blackman's address to us on Friday, she talked about what it means to be a bold church with bold hope. And she said that this looks like committed congregations taking the risk to relentlessly practice love together. To practice love together. This is a little bit what Paul is talking about in our text from Ephesians today. So despite all that makes a faith community different, all that makes individuals in a faith community different, and last week we celebrated that diversity that makes us different, we are to remember that we have one bold hope. In our work as a church together, we are to preserve the unity of the Spirit with a peace that ties us together. Now this is not easy. Anyone who has ever shared space with another human, be it a relative or a roommate or somebody as a chosen family person, knows that to share space means there will inevitably be conflict. Because anyone who's attempted to be in community with another human being knows that you have different opinions, you have different thoughts, you have different ways of being, and sometimes that leads to conflict. So in order to be together in community, it helps to stay focused on our shared hope, to preserve the unity of the spirit. And to do that, we get this little bit of guidance. We need to conduct ourselves with humility, with gentleness and patience. We are to accept each other with love. When we intentionally gather in a community, we commit to doing the difficult work of remaining in unity. Now, I invite us to think about that way back when we have new members join the church. We ask them these questions. We say, will you challenge this community University City United Church to be the best version of itself and to live up to the things we say we believe? And will you allow yourself to be changed, shaped, and transformed by this community living into your called identity as a beloved child of God? That's well and good and important for those new people becoming part of this church. But we don't stop there. We ask all of us the same question. And we say, will you allow these new folks to challenge us? Will you allow them as a church to change us and shape us and transform us? It takes all of us together to be this kind of community. The Reverend Blackman went on to say this as she was talking with us, and she said, Bold church requires courageous leadership that calls for innovative approaches. 
We may not do things the way we've always done them, but we will do them the way they need to be done with unwavering optimism. She was echoing that sense of growth that Paul is nudging the church in Ephesus toward that we just read this morning. Paul reminds us that we are to continue to mature and to grow in our faith. Because, newsflash, we are not done growing in faith when we're baptized. Many of us were baptized as infants, so hopefully we weren't done. We were not done when we were confirmed. Many of us were confirmed in the church as, you know, 12, 13, 14-year-olds. Hopefully we didn't stop growing then. We're not done when we join a church. Instead, we are always maturing and growing in our faith. We are not the same church that we were 60 years ago when this church was started. We're not the same church that we were 14 years ago when we became open and affirming. We're not the same church that we were last week. We are always being nudged to grow. We are always encouraged to support one another when we stumble both as individuals and as an entire community. Now, when I was growing up at Zion's United Church of Christ outside of Albany, New York, my pastor, the Reverend Kim, would regularly ask me to fill in for her when she was on vacation. She would ask me to prepare worship, and she would ask me to preach. I was a high school student. And I probably shared pretty terrible sermons. You might say that's still true, but you know, carry on. And later, she told me as I was sharing with her, you know, I I, I sort of feel this sense of call to ministry. She said, I know. And I said, what do you mean, you know? She said, we've just been waiting for you. In fact, the whole church has been asking me, when is Iona going to know she's going to be a pastor? And Reverend Kim said, just just give her some time. Let her figure it out for herself. But that faith community nurtured and supported me as it did other young people over the hundreds of years that it was on the hillside there in that tiny mountain town. The same way we do here. We nurture and support one another to learn and to grow, to listen when we find ourselves in a moment of conflict, to offer the benefit of the doubt to someone who is struggling, to hold one another accountable to acting with gentleness and humility and patience, to bear with one another in love and to choose to live in peace. We remind one another of this shared unity that we have, of our shared hope together. Blackman continued in her talk to say, Bold hope is inspiring action that motivates people forward. It is future-oriented and it thinks about the generations to come. Church, we have continued to remain focused on hope. Hope that we keep working to create a community beyond these walls where people are loved and people are fed and there is peace. We continue to hope that we practice radical love and that we live that with every person that walks in the door and every person that we encounter. We continue to hold that shared hope that we will be creating a world that generations to come can thrive in. Those ones that were up here, we're making sure the world that they get 
and their kids get and their kids' kids get is one that they can thrive in. And it's only together that we can do that. None of us can do it alone. So church, keep being the church. We have reminders every week up here why we're doing it. Because when we keep modeling love, when we keep modeling bold hope, we all are encouraged and united to do that. We remain focused on this bold hope and don't get bogged down in the things that divide us. And we remember, dear church, that it takes all of us working together, holding one another accountable, remembering our hope together because we are indeed the people of that church. All of us. Thanks be to God. Amen.